In the rolling moors of West Yorkshire, in the shadow of the South Pennines, lies the market town of Keithley. A town built on textiles, mills used to adorn the entire parish, and winding amongst these mills was a railway used to transport all of this precious cotton cargo to the rest of Yorkshire and beyond. But when all these once busy and bustling mills fell silent, that should have spelt the end for the railway as well. A seemingly innocuous five miles of track winding through the moors, surely no one would even notice if it were to disappear. Well, as it turned out, one determined group disagreed and vowed to keep this little line alive. And 60 years on from the original date of closure, here it is, still standing and more popular and beloved than ever before. Let me take you on a journey on the marvelous, magical, Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. Hello people of the internet, welcome back to another station on the mile and welcome to the rather charming Keithley station. Look at this place. We're in a very lovely picturesque part of the country at a very lovely quaint little station which also appears to be housing some sort of secret. Down this ramp and to the left are platforms one and two. Those are your normal everyday platforms. Northern trains serve places like Leeds, Skipton, Carlisle, places like that. But over here on platforms three and four and I don't know quite what happens when you walk up the steps and go over to platforms three and four there appears to be a time portal right on those steps there that as you walk through it you suddenly end up back in 1953 because instead of modern northern units and things like that suddenly you you've got old steam trains got vintage coaches look. look at this what's going on here what's the TARDIS malfunction again I think it might have done, or it might just be that this is also the headquarters of the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. It's a little heritage line that I've really wanted to check out for a long time, and I'm very excited to bring you all with me through the time portal. So, um, what's the worst that can happen? Let's go. While I hop aboard my first train of the day, let's take a look at the route I'll be exploring on said train, shall we? Keithley Station was first opened by the Leeds and Bradford Extension Railway in 1847, on their line from Shipley to Skipton and formerly beyond to Colne. With Keithley and the surrounding area being such an industrial hotbed, a branch line to transport local goods and serve up to 15 local mills began construction in 1862. Delays in construction included a cow eating plans near Oakworth, no seriously, and issues with the treacherous and hilly terrain. Finally, the line opened in 1867, branching off from the main line at Keithley itself. A third route from the southeast, linking Keithley to Bradford and Halifax via a triangle station at Queensbury, was constructed in the 1870s, joining the original branch and running into Keithley Station, which in itself was recited slightly further south in 1883, to accommodate the extra traffic. Aside from the rerouting of a problematic section of line through a newly built Mytholmes Tunnel in 1892, that's how things stayed for the next 80 odd years. That is until the 1960s rolled around and, well, you kind of know how it goes by now. Except when the beaching cuts inevitably arrived in the Worth Valley, local opposition was fierce. The line was formally closed by British Railways in 1962, with the Queensbury Lines branch already gone by 1955. However, with the preservation movement really taking off, the Bluebell Railway had become the first standard gauge heritage line in the world just two years previously in 1960. There was a determined local movement hoping to do the same for this little branch line in West Yorkshire. Despite laying dormant and rotting for six years, the Preservation Society was able to purchase the line from British Railways, and by 1968, just over 100 years after the line first opened, the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway was operational once more. And to this day, it holds the distinction of being the only entirely preserved complete route in the United Kingdom. The line and stations are all present exactly as they were in operational service. So here it is, five miles, six stations, and 155 years of history contained within it. So let's get exploring all of that history, shall we? So 
friends, I bring to you not one, not two, but three bits of good news. Number one, I've got me a cup of tea. Now I haven't had a cup of tea so far this morning, so that was kind of needed. Number two, I've got something to eat as well. Third bit of good news is that I'm on the Keith Inworth Valley Railway. Now I've come all the way to West Yorkshire, into North and everything, and um, guess what Loco's hauling my first train of the day? The Great Western Pannier. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> Morning. See, I'm here this weekend for the spring steam gala, and I like to do this with heritage lines. If I'm going to travel all the way to document a heritage line, I want to see it at its best. And gala weekends are where lots of things are going on, lots of trains running, a lot of the home fleet are out in force, and you get guest locomotives. 7714, the Panning Attack hauling our train right now is one of those two guest locos and it's actually from the Seven Valley Railway and just as you'd expect from a Great Western engine it, it doesn't do subtlety it's been barking its way up the bank so far now there's actually two guest locomotives for this weekend's festivities and the other one is not only quite a bit bigger than the little pannier also a bit more at home this is a former LMS London Midland and Scottish Railway and the other guest locomotive is a former LMS locomotive Quite a notable one as well, number 46100, Royal Scott, which I've only ever seen before out on the main line. I remember actually, editing Adam, if you can find the footage, put it in here. And that's about as close as I've ever got to Royal Scott until this weekend, where not only am I going to be, yes, no, we know, we've, we've talked about you. Listen to that! That's how you can tell it's great West. Bork, bark, 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 bark. I'm doing a hecking big chaff. So there you go. We've got two guest locomotives, one borky pannier, one illustrious, big, powerful LMS superstar, a whole raft of the home fleet, and um, all of it set in this lovely backdrop of uh, West Yorkshire. I'm going to finish my tea and um, do my first few runs on the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. Spoiler alert, first impressions, very good. Ooh. <laughs> I'm such a child. <laughs> Let's go. A gala weekend is the perfect showcase of a heritage line. Lots of locomotives are out in force, there's plenty of trains running every day, and train nerds like me travel far and wide to visit, not only to see sights that they rarely see back home, but to get up close and ride behind locomotives you may rarely, if ever, get the chance to see anywhere else. That was certainly the case for me, as not only was the aforementioned Royal Scott the star guest attraction, one of only two of its kind preserved, but another former LMS Express locomotive heads up the home roster here at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, Jubilee Class number 45596, Bahamas. With just four Jubilees left altogether, Bahamas shares many similarities with Royal Scott. Both are powerful, prestigious former LMS Express locomotives. Both would have spent many years in service pounding the rails of the Northwest and the West Coast Main Line, and both have ended up continuing to lead long and active lives through many decades of preservation as rare examples of their respective classes. Old friends reunited in Yorkshire, how lovely. Given each loco's rarity and prestige, they were understandably proving very popular with punters and enthusiasts. Nevertheless, I'd pledged to ride behind each loco at least once over the weekend. So after acquiring some lunch, I managed to nab one of the most in-demand spots in town, the first window of the first coach right behind Royal Scott. Then, much to my surprise, Bahamas coupled up to our train as well. So, I don't really want to alarm any of you, but you remember when I said that I wanted to ride behind Royal Scott and Bahamas at least once during this gala? How about both on the same train at the same time? I'm in the first window right behind the locomotives, plural be good.
At this point, I may as well confess that this was how I spent the entirety of my first day on the railway, riding up and down on trains, grinning like an idiot the entire time. And really, can you blame me? With such a diverse roster of locomotives running from the aforementioned stars to pre-war designs, like this O2 tank engine number 85 from the former Taff Vale Railway in Wales, first built in 1899, and this Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway ironclad locomotive, originally built back in 1887. And so, after an entire day of pratting around on the track, I mean, intense research, that's really what I meant, what were my first impressions of this utterly wonderful line? Well, spoiler alert, they were very, very positive. So here we are, we're on our last journey, our first day, here at the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway. And what are my first impressions of this little line? It's brilliant. I think I've fallen a little bit in love today. And the thing is about all of this, this is all my first impressions after just one day of riding up and down the line on trains all day. I've not even explored any of the stations, except for Keithley. There's a lot of stations on this line with a lot of secrets to be uncovered. And um, that's what we're going to be focusing on on day two. But for now, it's been a long day. I'm rather tired. And um, let's just trundle back to Keithley and home, shall we? So we're back at the Keith and Worth Valley Railway for day two. Given that we're going to be exploring more of the stations in the local area today, you know, I'm from Kent, I'm from South London, I'm a, I'm a long way away from home here in Yorkshire. So I figured it'd be quite useful if I had like a local guide, someone to help me around All here. Right. Hello, who are you? I'm Catherine, Yorkshire's hidden history. What do we think? The accent checks out? Authentic, yeah. Authentically Yorkshirian? Yorkshirian? Is that a thing? Yeah, I think it'll do. Brilliant. Okie doke. Yes. Excellent. So, just to clarify, you are from Yorkshire. Yes. Born you're and bred. In, you're in your, your history. Yeah. Do you, do you like trains? Yeah, trains are alright. Excellent. I think that'll do. Yeah, let's do you wanna, do. Do you want to join us on our adventure today? Yeah, let's ride some trains. Brilliant. Let's go. Time to do the very thing I kind of sort of forgot to do the previous day, and that is actually explore the various stations on this five mile line. And with six stations in all with their own features to explore, we better get cracking. Our first train of the day will be hauled by this adorable Ivert Class 2MT tank engine number 41231 in a very unique Keithley and Worth Valley Railway livery. Why this special one-off livery? Well, because this very engine hauled the very first reopening special train way back in 1968. Bahamas may be the more powerful and illustrious, but this little loco is the original legend of the home fleet. So as we climb out of Keithley, the old mills inside of what was once a bustling goods yard to our right, and the abandoned track bed for the former Queensbury Lines branch to Halifax hiding in the undergrowth off to our left, we arrive at our first stop at Ingrow West. What looks like a quaint little station is actually a real labour of love. The original structures were too badly vandalised and damaged to be restored in preservation, but incredibly in 1988, a building of very similar architectural style was found at the abandoned Falridge station in nearby Lancashire in surprisingly good condition despite laying disuse since 1959. There's also not one but two museums in Ingro. The Ingro Loco Museum run by the Bahamas Loco Society and housed in the original Midland Railway goods shed and the Museum of Rail Travel run by the Vintage Carriages Trust. Both were fascinating, although Catherine had an issue with one exhibit in particular. So we found something quite interesting here in the museum at Ingro West. It's um, it's about Stevenson's rocket. Catherine, what uh, would you make of that? How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Meantime, I was also distracted by a rather creepy mannequin. Do you know, I swear I've seen this one before. Are you my mummy? <laughs> let's get out of here. <laughs> anyway, let's proceed onwards through the Worth Valley via the adorably tiny Demem station and onwards to Oakworth, perhaps the most famous station on the entire line. Oakworth, which everybody knows was the filming location for the railway children because you know everyone and their nan's dog knows that. We've been I on didn't. 
on quite a few stations, haven't we? Yes, we have. It's one of those slightly. Hello, Pania, we know you're here. Yeah, if you want that kind of screen time, you need to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Gave me enough screen time yesterday. We were gonna stop off at the tiny, tiny little halt station of now. We've asked everyone and their nan today how this is pronounced. No one seems to agree. Demems, demems. Damems. How do we pronounce it? If we're doing it wrong, you've got no leg to stand on because nobody knows how to say it. Yeah. I try and ask locals how station names are pronounced to avoid angry comments like, oh, it's, no, it's Bista, it's not boy chest. Oh no, whatever. This time around, even the locals don't know. We're gonna go with Demems, which I keep wanting to say Demems. I'm pretty sure that's not it. We're not here for Demems. <laughs> <laughs> Despicy memes. That's the smallest station in the country in terms mm. of platform length. Now, we're at Oakworth. And I think it says a lot about the day that we are barely halfway down the line and we're about halfway through the day. Yeah, it's like five to three now. We started at nine o'clock. Yep, and it's a five mile railway. It's a testament to how much there is to do actually because we spent a lot of time at the museum in Ingro and we've still got other stations to do, but we've spent a lot of time here, so you do need a full day. Yes, you really do, including here at Oakworth, where the main exhibition today is a crane. Steam crane. It is a steam, it's not a steam train, it's a steam crane. It did everything a crane does and more. And everything a steam train does. Mm. It trundled up and down and it did crane things. And it choo-chooed. And it choo-chooed, it did! Which we like to think was just trolling everyone on the platform, making yeah. people think that a train was on its way. It was very convincing because I kept looking to see if a train were coming. Yeah, so did I. We've just missed our train to Haworth. We're... There'll be another one. Yeah, there will. Be re. Be re. <laughs> Anyway, we'll come to you in a bit, at some point, from Haworth. Alongside that famous cameo in The Railway Children, the Keith Ian Worth Valley Railway has quite the showreel of film and TV appearances, including the 1979 Richard Gere movie Yanks, 2007's Brideshead Head Revisited, Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall, and various TV shows like Born and Bred, The League of Gentlemen, All Creatures Great and Small, and Peaky Blinders. And now, of course, it's got its most famous appearance of them all, on the Another Station, Another Mile YouTube channel. Obviously. Anyway, next is the line's official headquarters at Haworth Station, located firmly in what's often labelled as Bronte Country, a name that rather grinds Catherine's gears. So we're at Haworth. Yep, Go making on. sure we get that pronunciation right. Don't make, don't make me say it. But don't, make, don't make you say what? We're in Bronte country. Uh, what was that? We're in Bronte country. Uh, no, I, I didn't quite catch that. We're in Bronte country. Uh, yes, we, yeah, we are apparently. So, obviously Haworth is most famous for being the home of the Brontes. And it is probably one of the most famous places in Yorkshire as a result. I don't like the Brontes. I read Wuthering Heights. It was very disappointing. I think Kate Bush's song is far better than the novel. I also think the Brontes overshadow all other bits of Yorkshire history. No effort is really made for an original idea or original research. You just slap a Bronte onto something. There's a takeaway called the Bronte Balti. <laughs> for context, let me translate this into train nerd terms. Bronte to Yorkshire is basically like the Flying Scotsman to steam trains. It's like, oh, Yorkshire, oh, Bronte's, right? Yeah, that's, mm. that's the only thing to care about. Oh, it's, you're in steam, it's like the Flying Scotsman. Yeah, the Scotsman. Yeah. Same uh, sort of energy? Well, everyone knows the only two trains in existence are the, the Flying Scotsman and Thomas. Let's move on to parts of Haworth that yeah. don't involve semi-famous authors, yeah. which is the very lovely station here. Yeah. It's it a very lovely station and Interestingly, this is where the original Keith Finworth Valley branch line was supposed to end here. It was supposed to link a bunch of local like mills and freight mostly, commercial interest. Except a local mill owner down at Oxenhope petitioned, just extend it a bit longer. Yeah, I'm having trail at my mill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was supposed to be the original uh, terminus and it actually now is the home of the main locomotive shed where almost all of the home steam locos and diesels live. And that's the old goods shed. And we've seen quite a few goods facilities already. That might be a reason why this line is so, there's so much going on at every station. Yeah. We're in the heavy woolen area of Yorkshire. You know, Bradford was called Worstedopolis because it produced so much wool and, and textile. So obviously in this part of Yorkshire, you're gonna want a lot of freight trains and places to, to move and store these goods. Yes, in an era where moving freight by train was the only way to do yeah. it. Luckily, it seems that most of the freight facilities on this little line, which were primarily built for such, 
have survived, which means, you know, like Ingro West has got the, the, the shed with the exhibitions there. Oakworth, we've just come from, has got the steam crane. Steam crane. <laughs> it's not a steam train. It's a steam crane. And this has what well, formerly was the big old good shed. It's now the locomotive shed. I've been trying to think of this word all day. <laughs> finally come to me it's densely packed yeah there's it's, it's, it's compact yes there's a lot going on per, per like mile of track the way to think imagine of. it is like a like a, a pub crawl you know because you're not walking for miles on a pub crawl yeah this is a station crawl yes you're like oh it's only five miles that'll only take an hour no hang on how has the day gone by and we're still not even at Oxenope which yeah, is it's gone half four when did we start this morning nine o'clock we better go along to Oxenhope <laughs> yeah. then, shouldn't we? <laughs> After an entire day of exploration, we finally made it to the southern terminus of the line at Oxenhope. And in a very rare moment of peace, we settled down for a cuppa in the buffet coach to reflect on this quite extraordinary railway. So we've reached Oxenhope. At we'll... last. <laughs> it's, it's only taken... Many hours. Eight hours. <laughs> We're at the end of the line on yes. this station crawl. It's been a great time. It really has. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I mean, obviously, I'm glad I have as well. Mm. I think it's a very big compliment that even if you're not necessarily into trains themselves, yeah. you've still had a good time out here. What's really heartwarming is seeing all the passion from people. Like, if you're a train nerd and you come here on the Steam Gala, y you will meet your people. Oh, God, you yeah. Know, you're seeing all of these people so passionate about it, so excited to be there, and we were chatting with random people. That's what we do in the North. We talk to strangers. <laughs> on I'm still not used to it. <laughs> That's the great thing. It's, it, it's got a really friendly atmosphere. You yeah. Know, everyone's just chilling out and having fun. Yep. So I definitely recommend visiting when there's an event on like this. Yeah, this is one of the most intense, like, energetic atmospheres I've ever known at Heritage Railway. Mm. And I know it's a steam gala, I know there's some guest locomotives here, but it really feels like some of the trains I've been on, I've never known a line be this busy for two days straight. It's just lovely. I love seeing this many people excited about it, old trains. It's Leeds Fest for train nerds. <laughs> yes, that's a good way of putting it all for me, it'd be Reading Festival. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I said this about the East Lancashire Railway, that I, I love the fact that that railway kind of feels like a part of the local community. Mm. This really feels like a sort of, it's like a sort of mecca. Yeah. You're going to come, people from, we've seen, I've heard a lot of Geordie accents we, out here. Yeah, there's Scottish accents as well. Scottish accents, yeah, people have come from all over. I keep saying it, it's five miles long. It's a tiny, relatively small branch line in West Yorkshire, in, in the Dales, in the Moors, mm. you know. There's far more, seemingly far more illustrious, longer, you know, bigger, heritage railways around mm. and yet this little branch line that was closed and then reopened before any of it could be torn up yeah i think that's great it was also one of the one of the first round mm. it was always very useful it's like no no other line i've ever been to yeah and i have been to quite a bit i have been to quite a few yeah it's got it's got a real magic to it so we, we've reached the end we're going to complete the circle and go back yep. to the very beginning yep but it's been it's been a great time yep absolute bloody pleasure to have you along for this one thank you it's really cool and um Day's not even over yet. Yeah. Like you said, we've got to still go back to Keekley. Yeah. So, um, finish your tea. All right. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Like many historic lines, the Keekley and Worth Valley Railway has lived many lives across its 150 year plus history. The nondescript freight branch serving local communities and industry, the humble passenger line connecting the villages to the cities, the plucky pioneer of preservation, the glamorous film star backdrop, and now the charming tourist attraction and historic time warp. But what do all of these identities have in common? All of them were sharing this relatively small, yet particularly gorgeous part of the world with the rest of the world. Exporting the goods of the local mills to all points beyond, taking people to and from the valleys and dales to go off on adventures and come home safe again. Showing the world the beautiful sights, becoming as big a character as any of the actors who have set foot on these rails. And now it itself is the place people go on adventures to. Five miles of magic, six stations full of stories, a locomotive roster full of characters great and small, a perfectly preserved moment in time, but one that lives and breathes with all the energy and charm of any former glory days. Since I started this channel, people have insisted that I just had to visit this line one day. And after just two days in the Worth Valley, it wasn't just easy to see why folks love this place so much. But to be honest, I'd fallen a bit in love with it too.
So that's it. Yep. After many hours, <laughs> yeah. it's been a long day. But it's been fun. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And yes. I'm clearly not a trained nerd. But Whereas <laughs> I am a trained nerd and I've fallen in love with this place. <laughs> this may be, bold claim, this may be my favourite heritage line I've visited in this series. That, that's quite a bold claim. Feeling quite proud of that one. Yep. Um, <laughs> Keith Linworth Valley, you, you're railway spectacular. I love it. I don't want to leave the time portal that I talked about. It's, it's just over there. I don't want to go back. <laughs> Don't make me go back to 2022. I don't want to. I want to stay in 1953. Yeah. I mean, not everything was great yeah. in 1953, but the, <laughs> the trains were. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honor yeah. to have you on the channel as well. Yeah, thanks. Remember to go sub to her because she's brilliant. <laughs> Seriously, she's really good. And you'll probably see her on some billboards in London as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm getting in there before she gets really famous and yeah. her fees are far too high. <laughs> for now, my payment for being in this video, mm. pub. Yep. Yeah, All right, let's go. See you guys soon along the way.